Welcome to the channel. This is Go Greddy and welcome to the 2021 FIA Nations Exhibition Season Round Number 8. Tonight we are at Catalonia and we're in the Group 2 cars and it is open tuning. So can I put together a tune for the GR2 cars like I did for the GR3? Well, you're going to have to stick around to find out. All right, lobby opens up, and once again, we are in the top split, and I am door number 19, so it looks like there is nowhere to go but up once again. And uh, so, of course, to go up, you need to start near the front here with all these fast folks. So on to qualifying. I had this nice little group growing there, but as you see, Totally Lit loses it, and looks like Cyrus and Wheats stay back to wait for him. But, uh, or wait for the other group of folks to come through. I think everyone wants a slipstream here. And uh, so I get kind of caught up in the mess. I'm like, I don't know. I hope I didn't, I hope I didn't lose the slip that I had because, man, I'd really need a slip to start this race so I can get that good qualifying in. And will I get it? I don't know. As everyone slows down, it becomes a parking lot. And I find, well, find a group of folks to get behind. So come out just fine smelling like roses end up behind quartz and a who very fast guy so pretty pleased with that coming down the straight i got a nice uh gap to him so i don't feel like i'm gonna run into the back of him hit him anything like that and if i can hit 183 miles an hour is about the best i can do in the slipstream here and i managed to do that get on the brakes jump onto the apex look all right there full throttle coming out through the rest of that s turn Get down to the inside, just back off the throttle a little bit, punch it, come out of here. Wished I had gotten on the throttle just a little bit earlier there. Get on the brakes before the bridge, send it down the inside, letting the car roll, using the downforce of that GR2 to stick me to the road. Again, get on the gas just a hair late, but not terrible. Into second gear around this corner, again, letting it roll, get on the gas early, out to the curbing as the car pushes out wide on the centrifugal force of the momentum down into third for this left-hander coming back out and now we're gonna have a very fast right-hander i felt like i kind of lost some time here didn't get on the throttle quite early enough didn't push out wide enough on the exit of that corner losing time there then get on the brakes here the black box on the right drop it all the way down into first gear let the car rotate pop it back up into second no i use first usually i was popping it back up in second right there but get down to the inside of the curbing here i stay tight through here some people will double apex this I like to stay tight. Uh, it just seems to do better for me on my times. Um, and then here's my least favorite part, least favorite part of the track, the dreaded chicane, and I take it well, pretty poorly. <laughs> it, it was not very fast, but it was serviceable. It was good enough to put in a lap time. And Greddy crosses the line with a 133.813. Not too bad. I mean, I'll take it. So, what, where does that put me? I mean, right there I was sitting P8, but after all is said and done, I am down in P11 to start the race. Not too shabby. I'll take it. So, for a strategy in this race, um, you could have soft or medium tires. No pit stops are required. No fuel is going to be needed during the race. So, I decided to do a one stop on, on soft tires. So, I'm going to go soft tires, soft tires, right at the split, 9 and 9. Some people could make... The softs laughed, last the whole way through. I was not one of those people. So, lights go out, and I take off. I do not make the mistake of removing the traction control this time like I have in the past. I leave it on well down the straight to make sure I don't spin out and do anything crazy. Now, I've got a nice little gap here. No one around me. I can kind of pick my line. Uh, the F1 guy to the right of me breaks a little bit early. Ends OP. That's okay. I just follow him through. I'm looking for a good line here. I'm going to go to the inside um, underneath Cyrus. As Cyrus drifts out wide on the gas a little bit late there, pushes a little bit deep in the corner. A little surprised about that. I was actually chasing Cyrus's ghost before the race to warm up. So I get on the gas there, let it come around, push towards the outside. Enzo P is behind me. He actually cuts underneath Cyrus. Now look at Fat and Loud living that thug life. Knocks Super Chicken off track. And I get a Greddy pass out of it. Can't honestly say those are the kind of Greddy passes I like to see when people get knocked off the track by other people. I much prefer the Greddy pass where, you know, the pressure that I'm applying from behind is just too much, too great, and they go off on their own. But Fat and Loud, he's got to do a better job. He's, he's got to wait for that guy after running him off like that. That is not good to see in these top split lobbies. If Cyrus sends it down the inside, um, I, I close the door on him pretty tight there. 
it was early in the race, and uh, I was trying to stay in the slipstream of Greasy, so it, it aggravated me a little bit that he was trying to send it right up the inside right there, right then. Not that I'm ever usually aggravated by Cyrus, because he's usually so far ahead of me, it doesn't really matter. But uh, I actually had a chance there to actually race a little door-to-door little -door with old Cyrus for a change. But Greasy and the group are actually pulling away from me, and that is not good. Um, I'm still within the slipstream, but just barely. As we come down, you can see I can get up to about 183 once again, but I break just a little too late and make that mistake. Don't get a good exit through the S-turns, and that is going to cause me to lose the slipstream coming out of the long right-hander. And that leaves me very vulnerable to Cyrus behind me because he is about a second faster than I am. So I know this. There's no doubt in my mind that at some point Cyrus is going to make a move on me. Uh, he looks down the inside there. I actually leave him a little bit of room right there. I felt a little bad about closing the door on him earlier. Not terrible, but a little bad. Just a little bit. Not, not like not like big bad. More like, yeah, I felt a little bad about it. I get really loose through there. I'm like, all right, I'm pushing the car too hard. I'm trying to drive too hard to try and keep Cyrus behind me. I was like, yeah, never never mind. I'm going to move over right here and just let him go. And then he had a penalty. He serves his penalty and falls back. I'm like, oh, well, well. That stinks. So going through the chicane, my car is bouncing all over the place. Have a terrible exit. Um, behind me, Apple Pop has a little bit better exit. I, and I think his gearing on his Lexus was pretty darn good, too. Because, boy, he, he really uh, seemed to catch back up to me quickly here on the straight. So as we're coming down the straight, the time gap between us is closing mightily. As we head towards corner one, I am not going to block Apple Pop. Um, again, another person who I know is a little bit quicker than me and Honestly, I, I was really wanting to just kind of settle into a race pace, try and get in some of the slipstream, and, and just start to just put down some just very quality laps. Cyrus goes down the inside, looks down the inside again. I leave him room to the inside, and I'm actually just going to slide right back onto his rear bumper and uh, drop back two positions there. Now, this isn't really hurting me that bad in this race because I really don't want to be racing these two guys. They are definitely quicker than me. Now, behind me, I've got F1 Enzo P. I'm not really familiar with that guy. I don't know his pace. don't know how quick he is, how quick he's not. Um, totally lit. I am pretty familiar with him. Uh, usually, he's a little bit quicker than me, but um, not, you know, we haven't raced that much lately, so I'm not really sure about what his pace was looking like just yet. So I was going to feel out these two guys behind me. Enzo looks down the inside right there. Easy defense for me as I'm in the slipstream of Cyrus and Apple Pop. And really, that's all I want to do in the point of the race is just kind of sit here in the slipstream. Now, by making that move, uh, Enzo loses that position to Totally Lit as Totally Lit slides down the inside of Enzo on that corner. All my goal right now is to survive the chicken and stay in the slipstream of Cyrus and Apple Pop. Now, Cyrus and Apple Pop battling out a little bit there. Cyrus slides in front of Apple Pop. I've got totally lit all over the backside of my 2008 Zanavi GTR made by the Nissan Corporation. That's right. Totally lit on the outside there. I am slide down on the inside. Now, that causes ASR Wheats, which I have no idea where Wheats <laughs> came from. I was like... I was expecting it to be Enzo back there, and I look up, I'm like, well, that's not Enzo, that's Wheats. So again, go through this stupid chicane. I don't know who decided to put the chicane on this track, but it's absolutely awful. I lose max in speed. ASR Wheats just e easily goes down the inside. No big deal there. Now, I know ASR Wheats and Totally Lip are close podness, so they're probably on the mic to go. So I figure, all right, I'm not going to play this slipstream game. I give the signal to, to Lit, and I'm like, just, just go on by. I'm not even going to try to fight you two. Just, just, I just, I, I'd be happy with a P10 right now. So I slide in here behind Lit and Wheats, and I'm looking in my rearview mirror. I'm like, everything's looking good. Lit then goes off track. I'm trying to avoid him, stay left, and he comes back on, pushes me out wide there, which allows Enzo P to catch back up. And I'm like, ah. And then Lit loses it on the exit, gets over in the sand. He's got the dirty tires. He's giving me the caution lights, the apology for what happened there in those last corners. Not a big deal. Now, probably would have let him go had he not gone off track there. I probably would have bump drafted him. But because he went off track and I knew his tires were dirty, I went ahead and then I was going to let him use my slip and pull us both up. I didn't want to lose too much time. Um, so, looks like Enzo breaks a little late there, almost hits me or Lit, bails out of the move. Lit slides underneath me. Again, I don't care. I really, I'm just, I'm trying, I'm hoping for a top 10. 
A lot can happen in the race. We're only on lap seven. And then a thirsty move here by Enzo Pez. He looks at the inside right before the chicane. I'm like, oh, dude, right, right, right there. He bumps me from behind. And then after he bumps me from behind, I figure I have enough space between the two cars. And I slide down the inside, but he leaves just his front bumper underneath me. I was not happy with that move at all. I felt like it was a little thirsty. It was a little too much. I was like, ah, he could have waited a little bit, you know, set up the exit. But right here, look, he bumps me. And as I'm coming back in, he gets just underneath me, does not back out at all, just stays in the throttle, doesn't care about my race, and just keeps on going. So two pretty questionable moves here in the top split lobby that I've seen so far. That one and the one prior by Fat and Loud. So anyway, it wasn't the most egregious move on the planet. Don't get me wrong here. But it wasn't exactly, you know, I, I thought he could have easily just backed out, let me slide in front of him. He'll make a pass on me eventually. Um, but he did so heading to the pit stops on lap nine come out on lap 10 and I have fallen back to 20th place after getting run off the track there um, on that questionable inside move going into the long right hander so but karma being what it is well sometimes you get a little payback Enzo P goes in the pit <laughs> can't negotiate the corner gets stuck in there sideways gets a two and a half second penalty to boot so I, I get some retribution after all. So anyway, on to lap number 12. I catch up to Hockey is Free, who's in 18th place. Now, I'm in 19th and he is in 18th. So I really don't see any point in doing anything foolish here. I'm like, hey, let's, let's just have a good race, a good clean race. And I'll see if I can get by him here. Uh, no telling if I can or can't. Not sure. Um, I did catch him from a good ways back. So I wasn't sure if he was trying to no stop or uh, if, you know, Maybe he was on a, he tried a, an undercut and he was on a long stint on, on tires that were getting worn, but he seemed not to be able to hold good speed in the corner. So I back off there, get on the throttle early coming out the exit, get a really nice run. And as the two penalties are served in front of me, I go right down between the middle of him and uh, Bastion there. And uh, Bastion able to get a little better exit than me, and I have to slide in behind him, but do make the move on hockey is free. So I'm up to P18. Woo! So not last, um, not anywhere near where I was up before at 10th, but not, not too terrible. Go through the chicane that I love so little, and I get back on the backside of Bastion as we come down the straight. I'm going to see if I can't make a move before the corner, but man, that, that 16 GTR just pulling on me as we head down that straight. Get on the gas early, coming through the S, out of the exit, and I notice he's staying out wide here. He can't get down in the apex, which means he's got some tire degradation. So I send it up the inside. And I can hear his engine revving up on me on the outside. But I get on the brakes just late enough to make the apex nice and tight. Stay in PX Cam's 20 slipstream and make the pass on lap 13. But that's right. En I mean, not Enzo. Uh, Bastion's not done. He makes the move back on me heading into the left-hander. So good, good move back there by Bastion. I didn't close the door like I should have. That was my fault. Third gear coming in this corner. I'm gonna have to try and maybe make a move on this straight here. Again, trying to get on the gas early before the corner exit. Works pretty well. I'm getting a pretty decent run on him, but man, he's really got some nice legs on the top end on that 2016 GTR. So not able to catch him before the hairpin, but he goes wide on the exit. Again, his tire is suffering just a little bit. I go down the inside. He's having trouble keeping it on the inside line. I'm able to actually drive around his outside on the tight right hander heading towards the, the chicane here on lap 13. Can I get through the chicane without dying? Yes, I can. I make the move stick, get through the chicane without death. Now I put the head down. Time to chase down PX Cam 20. Lap 14, finally catch up here to PX Cam 20. He is also in the 2016 Motul GTR by the Nissan Corporation. <laughs> and uh, so I, I'm, again, looking for some clean racing, looking to just have a good time. I mean, I know I'm at the back of the field. There's not much chance of me catching these front guys who are just ridiculously quick have good tunes and are good drivers so when, when they've got good tunes and are good drivers there's just not a whole lot you can do my tune was decent it wasn't you know a world beat or anything but it, it was okay my driving at Catalonia has always been pretty suspect so um, I go down the inside coming out of the hairpin 
PXK on 20 holds on to the position. He drifts wide, just like Bastion before him. So I slip down the inside in second gear. Power coming out. I think Cam backed off just a hair right there. Just kind of let me slide through there. So enjoyed the clean race there with PX Cam 20. Come out of the final chicane. I've got a little over six seconds on to the next driver, which is Fond Farewell. On to the final lap. I finally catch up to Fond Farewell. And he is in the 08 version of the Nissan GTR. So there's a chance that I might actually be able to catch him and make a pass here on this final lap as I believe his he's on a no stopper because his he just seems to really be suffering on the tires in the corners as I'm catching up to him so I'm gonna try again to do the move I did earlier where I back off the throttle early and get on early before the apex and it works pretty well I'm able to get a good run on him heading down the straight go down the outside and get on the brakes there by the black box make it stick so get another pass move in to P14 so a few gritty passes on the day and then a few you know, passes from some good, clean, hard racing. Puts me in position 14 heading through the last time through this freaking awful chicane that I cannot stand. And we come out the other side and there is Andre Sav. Can we get an F in the comments below for Andre? Get my final gritty pass. Moving to P13 to finish the race. Not too terrible. I figured if everything went perfect, I might have finished P10, P11. So I may have lost a couple spots due to the, that move earlier in the race. Not a big deal. Hope you enjoyed the race. Hope you enjoyed the commentary. If you did, hit the like and or subscribe. Come back. Check out some more of the action. Take my 174 points. I go home for the night. For myself, go Greddy. Y'all have a great evening. DJ Clean, take us out of here.